Hi, so I'm back. I have been receiving a lot of questions about how to make more content, more digital activities, digital interactive activities available and more accessible to more students of varying ages, abilities, and needs. So the first thing that came to mind for me is the drag and drop. When you click on something, you drag it. So basically a sort. Um, so in the classroom, usually they're the cut and paste. Digitally, those are drag and drops. And there is a very simple way to create your own drag and drop activities for your students and then to share them on classroom. So I'd like to introduce you to a Google application that a lot of people don't know about um, or a lot of people don't use. At least when I bring it up, people are like, never even heard of that. So the application that we're going to be using today is called Google Drawings. It is the same kind of a thing as Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, that it is in the G Suite and it automatically uploads to your Google Drive, which means it's automatically shareable on Classroom. So let's get into Google Drawings. Best way, easiest way is just to go to Google and type in Google Drawings. It'll be the first thing that comes up. And when you click on it, it's gonna bring you right into a blank Google Drawings. It looks just like very reminiscent of Paint, the old program on our old school computers. It's super basic, but it has a ton of potential. So with that, first thing we're gonna do, like we do with anything, is we're gonna name it. And let's call it the short vowel sort okay now i'm going to take some inspiration from this worksheet i'm not going to copy it exactly because it's not my content but the design is definitely um, helpful so when i look at a table like this a chart like this it's simply like i said a table um digitally it has one two three columns and one two rows so i'm going to go to insert table with one, two, three columns and two rows. So it's in there for me. Um, so with that, I'm going to just make it so that I can make the text a little bit bigger because for a sort, especially, you don't want to have anyone squinting. And I like my text to always be centered. So this column is going to be the short E, then the short O, and then the short U. And let's make those bold. Yeah, that's better. So these lines here are very thin. Um, I'd like them to be a little more pronounced, especially as we're trying to help people with being able to see where something should be placed, um, just like in cut and paste. We want them to develop the skills to be able to place it in the column. So let's give them the best guidelines. Best way we do that is by highlighting and then going up here to border weight. And let's make it nice and thick there with an eight point thickness and let's do it black. All right, so on our worksheet, this simple worksheet here, the second row is a lot longer. So I just achieved that by clicking and then pushing enter, making multiple lines in there. All right. I don't need mine to be much larger. Um, but the cool thing for Google Drawings is that you have a huge canvas. You can go out of here. You can also down here, you can make this bigger if you wanted to. I don't need it to be bigger. I could also make it smaller if I wanted. Um, I'm just going to leave it. So with that, I want to put a spot for my students to put their name on it because it's a good practice. We know that all teachers know that, but I want to just remind you because there's always someone who tells me, Amy, in classroom, it's going to say it's under their name. I know whose it is, but the reason we put our name on these documents in Word, in Google Doc or anything is because from classroom, if you ever had to print out a student's assignment, it does not print with their name on it unless they actually have their name on it. So I always make a point to make a spot for their name. And I do that with just making a table here. You can do it however you wish. 
You could do a text box if you want, but I like to have um, obvious guidelines for them of where to put it. So let's make it thick like the other one with eight point. Oops, see how I only highlighted in there? Look at that, how it only did that one. So I want my hole. So mistakes happen, right? Awesome thing is this undo button. Ta-da. Okay. So I want everything to be covered in this. So I'd like to go here, highlight the whole thing, eight, and then let's make it matchy, matchy with the black there. Perfect. Um, I'm just going to actually make the font a little bit bigger for them. And let's make it bold. Okay. So now we're going to create the words with the short vowels that we want our students to sort into the columns that they go in. We're going to do that by just making text boxes. So we're going to click here. And I actually like to make my text box in the actual place where it will be sorted to. So we make sure that it actually fits. Um, so with that, my first one that I make, I always spend my extra time making sure that the font size is right and that the border is right, because then we can just copy and paste that. Why do it formatting for each individual text box when you can do it once, right? Work smarter, not harder. Isn't that what they say? So for this one, let's make the thickness four and let's make the font centered and let's make it the same size there. Let's make it 30. All right. So let's start with a short E word, wet. All right, let's make that bold. There we go. All right, I like that one. So now I'm gonna take this one and you see how I clicked on it and it has the blue frame. Now I'm gonna copy it. When it has that blue frame, I can click on control, hold control C, then I click off of it and I do control V. So now let's do it one more. We'll do two of each so that I don't take up too much time on this. All right, let's do a, another short E word. Let's do rest. Click off of it. Control V to paste. All right, let's do a short O word. Hot. Click off of it. Control V to paste. All right. And then let's come up with one more um, short O word, short O word, spot. Okay. And then it's like testing me here, right? Bringing it back to basics. Click off of it, control V to paste, sort this over, short U word. Let's do hug, click off of it, control V to paste. And one more short U word. Let's do plum. All right, so you now see it. Obviously, we're not going to leave those there. We'll move them around um, so the students won't have the answers before they start. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a little shortcut, a little hack that I learned um, with colors. So instead of having to click when all of these are submitted from however many students that you have, you don't have to necessarily click on every single one of them to look, oh, do they have wet, rest, hot, spot, hug, plum, um, but rather just look to make sure that the colors you know are supposed to be there are actually in the correct locations. Um, I'm a color person, so it makes it, makes it easier for me. Uh, so... I don't do the same colors for all of them because kids catch on very easily. So I'm going to do for this one, yellow and orange. So I'll remember yellow and orange go in that first one. For this one, let's do blue and green. All right. And then let's do pink and red. All right. What I usually do at this point is I take uh, my snipping tool and I take a screenshot of this. So then at whatever point that I assign this and it gets submitted and I'm grading them that I can remind myself, oh, yes, Amy, I'm looking for yellow, orange or green or blue, pink or red. And I can just quickly look at it over without having to do too much. So I remember it, screenshotted it, right? And now let's just sort these out 
for students. So when they get this, it's not already in the correct location. You can sort in Google Drawings over to the sides, which is really why I like it. Um, and all right, so we are over here. Perfect. And now we're not going to have to click save or anything, right? Remember up top, it always tells you all changes are saved automatically to your drive. We're going to go to our fake class and we're going to assign it to our fake student. So create assignment. And then we're going to call it the short vowel sort add and it's in our Google Drive. One thing that I need you to know is that even though you can see I did some other ones here, um, even though it looks different here, that is OK. Just that's why sometimes it takes a picture of it and stores it as its thumbnail image before where before the end. So this was a picture obviously taken from before um, we finished. And that's OK. It's not going to show up that way on the student end either. That's why I'm going to show you from the student perspective. So clicking on it, making sure the name matches what I have, um, the short vowel sort. Then I want to go students. I want to go make a copy for each student. Don't want to make that mistake. And then let's assign it. All right. And then once we've assigned this, I'm going to go into R and refresh our fake students page here, and it should pop up. The short vowel sort, yay, I love sorts because that's what they always say. Um, I wanna just stop and draw your attention. So on the student end, look at the little thumbnail. They don't see what we saw, which is good because sometimes people see that and they freak out thinking that you're gonna give all the answers away. You're not, you're good. So from the student end, we go in, and it's just as we left it. So let's just quickly, let's put, we put our name in, right? And now we're going to drag and drop where they're supposed to go. And then we're going to submit this as a student. I do want to just address one concern that I know at least one of you is thinking. These are text boxes. Mistakes happen, right? Somebody clicks it and then, oh no, or somebody clicks, it does that and then clicks the backspace and it's gone. One thing that I always spend a ton of time with my students on, and you need to just drill this into them, is the power in that undo button. Undo it comes back. Undo, the size is back to where it needs to be. So then we can move it and put it where it needs to go. There is not a way right now in this application to lock text box sizes. So we do, just as educators, have to address the issue before it becomes an issue, right? Just reminding them of how to troubleshoot when a problem actually occurs. So here's another thing that's a little bit different. Um, students do not have a turn in button here um, for things like Google Slides or on Google Drawings. So their turn in button is actually back on their page when they view the assignment that it's up here that it says turn in. I do, before I turn it in, um, I want to just show you from the student, um, from the teacher side that we don't see this as being turned in yet from Brianna. But if you were to click on this folder here, that's the folder that it stores all of your students work in for this particular assignment in this particular class. Um, and you're going to see that her work is there. You could click on it and check if she said, like, I did it, I did it. Um, but it's not going to really appear for us as being completed until unfortunately that button is pressed. So I went in and I was able to see it, but let's go back as Brianna, let's click turn in. Okay, I'm actually turning this in that I am done. 
All right, and now I'm going to just get out of that window there. Come back as the teacher. Let me refresh my screen. And now it says, the drum roll there, that Brianna has turned her work in. Look at this thumbnail. If I remember my colors, yellow and orange, blue and green, pink and red, I know Brianna already got it. So I can just adjust the grade here and give her her grade without having to click on it. That is why thinking it through and using color-coded answering is so, so clutch. Um, it could, for me, for example, I have two classes of little over 20 students. Um, I don't want to have to click on every single student's first sort to make sure that everything's in the right spot. Um, it's harder. You can't read the words, but you can totally see the colors. So hopefully from this, you see the power in using Google Drawings that you can create sorting activities, drag and drop activities for students. You can also see how if you are very conscious of your color choices for your answers and have a key and remember it, that it can alleviate a lot of your grading headache on the tail end. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out my other videos.